Hey Jags, today on Jag TV, we will preview this year's theater haunted house. Give you some details about a proposed city ordinance that can increase the smoking age. And show you how one of our teachers whips up some sweet treats. All this and more on this episode of Jag TV. San Antonio is working to potentially increase the smoking age in the city. Josh Keating has more from the San Antonio Metropolitan Health Department. With over 260 cities and counties in 18 different states, San Antonio is making an effort to be the first city in Texas to raise the legal smoking age from 18 to 21. This um, survey is being um, initiated by Metro Health, we're the local public health department. Um, we're putting this um, survey out to the community. We're gathering the data to present it to um, our community health panel and our city council. According to the city of San Antonio's Metropolitan Health District website, Metro Health is looking into the possibility of increasing the minimum legal age to purchase tobacco products, including cigarettes, e-cigarettes, vapes, hookahs, and chewing tobacco. There are many steps that the San Antonio Metro Health Department has to take before it is handed over to city council for approval. All the information is being gathered now and the first presentation will be at the end of the month to our um, community uh, health community committee. And then once that has gone through the committee, it'll go presented to city council uh, first of December. If the ordinance gets passed, the consequences will not come into effect for a while. If it does pass, more than likely will not um, take into effect until sometime in June of next year. Even with the new law, school administrators know that it is something they will have to encounter on campus. So changing the age, I don't know if it really makes a lot of difference, because whatever they want to do, they're going to find a way to get it anyway. If you would like to learn more about this proposed tobacco ban ordinance, visit tobacco21.org. In downtown San Antonio, Josh Keating, reporting for JAG TV. Just like how there are behavior expectations for students on campus, there are now rules in place for outside visitors. We had Maya and Jaden look into it. Because of a statewide issue regarding criminal trespass warnings, a visitor behavior policy has been newly updated this school year. This policy means that there is a behavior expectation for any visitors, including parents on any campus or at any school event. The rules have changed because the state legislators thought we were issuing too many. Now that's a statewide thing. That's not Northeast, that's just state. Northeast doesn't issue a lot of them, um, but when we do, it's necessary. But the rules have changed that now, instead of just issuing a criminal trespass warning on the first attempt, we have to warn them. Basically, if you don't stop, I'm going to have to warn you that I'm going to have to give you a warning. Criminal trespass warnings are also in effect for after school events. It, in, it involves extracurricular and co-curricular activities, meaning that if they are, if, if a parent comes to a football game and they're intoxicated, they can be given a criminal trespass warning to say you can no longer come to another Northeast event. And it can be specific even to a football game and or to any event at all. The updated policy gives people a chance to fix the problem with a warning before getting charged. That if we find somebody that is on grounds that has a criminal that does not have a criminal trespass, we get him, we make a report like always, we document it that he's been warned for him not to come on property. From Jag TV, this is Jaden Herrera. Lee High School now has a new name, one that has a familiar ring to it. Grant and Kendall have the inside look. With a 5-2 to two vote, the NEISD School Board has moved to rename Robert E. Lee High School, now Legacy of Educational Excellence. For months we had people come to our board meetings and they would talk during Matters from the Floor and we heard from people on both sides of the issues, those that wanted us to change the name and those that didn't want us to change the name. 
The name change was a strenuous process that students could participate in by submitting name suggestions. We opened it up for suggestions and we had a week where people could send in their suggestions for a new name. We wanted it to be an idea and not a person. And this was not the first time the board wrestled with renaming Lee High School. In December, it was on the agenda and we voted to keep the name of Robert E. Lee and we voted five to two. Then this August, after Charleston, we had another petition from students. Recent current events prompted the board to reevaluate once more the name of the school and the safety issues that could result in keeping the long-held name. The country has changed. There's so much racial tension now and the district had heard that there was potential for sit-in protests on campus. There was um, threats to the statue and we really felt like it became a safety and security issue. And while Legacy of Educational Excellence is a new name, it is still Lee. And for some, this was a missed opportunity to go in a completely new direction. I think that there is some disappointment on some side about the name not being something totally different. Well, let's say we would have gone to um, a name that didn't include the acronym of Lee. We would have had to change everything on that campus. The floor mats say Lee High School. The stationery, the marquee, the, all the signs around campus. And if we had totally gone a new direction for a name, it would have been very extensive to the district. There was also talk of changing the school colors and mascot. The board has the purview to choose the name or approve the name. Then after that, it's the administration that can determine the mascot and the colors. The statue of Robert E. Lee will stay in place for now, but will be moved to a museum-like room. I believe what we're gonna try and do is move it into, make a room that's gonna be like a museum. And so we'll put all the um, Robert E. Lee stuff in there because we're not trying to erase 60 years of a school's history. We want to be able to memorialize that. With all of the changes that are going to be made involving the school's name, they will not take effect until next school year. So this year it is still Robert E. Lee High School. The students will have Robert E. Lee High School on their diplomas. Everything sta The statue stays where it is. Nothing changes at campus right now. But once the school year's over, we get to the summer and before the new school year starts in 2018, that's when we will um, change it to Legacy of Educational Excellence. From JAG TV, this is Kendall Mapes. With Halloween just around the corner, the Johnson Theater Department has been gearing for their first ever haunted house. Ariana and Eric have more details. Senior Ronnie Bueller is usually busy working on major productions, but is adding something new to the calendar this year, Johnson's first ever haunted house. Well, our haunted house is the very first haunted house that Johnson is going to be hosting, and it's going to be pretty terrifying. And we're really excited because we're putting a lot of effort into it. And it's going to be a lot of tech and actor work with our theater department, and so we're extremely excited. And like other haunted houses, this one will have a theme for those looking for a good scare. The whole theme of it is um, like a science experiment gone wrong, and so all the monsters in it are going to be um, failed experiments, and yeah, it'll be super fun, really interactive. To ensure a scare to your satisfaction, the haunted house will be set up into two separate levels. Uh, so we have two levels. There's a red and a green level. The green level will be cheaper than the red level, but the only reason is because it's less scarier than the red level, and there's also age restrictions. If you are too young, you're definitely not going to be admitted to uh, the red level because the red level is more gory, more terrifying, more high adventure, if you will. And like any good production, students will be filling a variety of the roles. For the haunted house, the mad scientist is gonna be directly in the red level. I'm going to be the last um, sort of like scary area of the haunted house where the guests will come in and there will be a big chase scene with the monster that I've created to 
um, get them. For everyone's safety, students in the department are prepped for the worst case scenario in case of an emergency in the haunted I don't house. Think we, need to see. we are all going to be trained in first aids. All our actors in tech are going to be trained in first aid. We're also having the school nurse with us, and she's going to be training us, especially like personally, like hands on. So we will be able to um, deal with any any emergency situations that we did not expect. And also, we will have a panic room in the middle of the haunted house just in case if someone happens to have an episode. Be sure to check out The Haunted House on October 28th. From Jack TV, this has been Ariana and Eric. All proceeds will go to the Johnson Theater Department, so make sure to come out and support. One of Johnson's very own will soon be taking the center stage at a national Taekwondo Invitational. Paula and Emily got the exclusive. On any given weeknight, you can find Johnson senior Lucas Fontenot training, and now he's preparing for the competition of a lifetime. I got chosen to go to the ESPN Invitational out in Orlando, which is at our fall nationals, um, and you get chosen for it by sending in a video to the ATA, which is our uh, big overall organization, and they go in and they pick a random age group, and then they pick two random people, and I uh, got lucky to get chosen for that. Lucas says he practices Taekwondo about three hours a day, up to 21 hours a week. I practice every day, and that's even if it's not here, I'll be at my house. I have a whole setup in my garage. I have bags, I have mats, I have everything. So if I'm not here, I'm at my house. His instructor says it's that discipline and commitment that has gotten him to where he is today with an invitation to compete at the national level. When he comes here, uh, right away he clocks in, helps teach with classes, um, and then when he's actually training in class, we do the warm-up, we do push-ups and sit-ups and our punching combinations, kicking combinations. Then we, we go into what's called forms. It's like a routine uh, of patterns and actually it's what he's ranked number one in the world on. I do this sport because it's something active and it's something different than your regular sports like your football, your soccer, your basketball. And it's something that is more interesting to more people. Like if you say, oh, I play basketball, someone goes, oh, that's cool. But if you go, oh, martial arts, oh, wow, so you do this, you do this, and this. It's more of like something that you can talk about more and it's something that you don't see everybody doing. And after participating in the sport for seven years, those around him say Taekwondo has shaped Lucas's personality. We support him because he's excelled in the sport and it has really built his confidence and his character and who he is today. Even though reaching that level seems like the next logical step for Lucas, the moment they found out was still overwhelming for his biggest fan. I can't put it into words. I was actually ecstatic. Um, and I was the only one that knew. He didn't know. I came to school to, uh, to tell him before anyone else would tell him. After nationals, Lucas still has to look forward to the rest of his senior year and college. As an athlete, I think that he's grown a lot flexibility-wise. Um, I know that he has always been training hard to be able to jump um, sustain his cardio. His cardio has definitely improved a lot. The sky's the limit for him. That's what I think is great about him is he works hard. If he wants something, he's going to fight for it. He's going to work for it. In North San Antonio, Paulette Carrion reporting for JAG TV. Tune into ESPN3 on October 20th at 6 p.m. to support your fellow Jaguar. This past week has brought some exciting matchups for our sports teams. Let's get into the recap with JAG Sports. I'm Reed Romine. I'm Jade Martinez, and this is JAG Sports. The football team is entering the middle of district play and are in the running for the district title. The Jags took on MacArthur in their second district game. The offense started strong with this touchdown catch from Brandon McDuffie putting Johnson up 7 to nothing. Touchdowns from Mike Chandler and Justin Rodriguez kept the offense rolling all night. The story of the night, though, was the Jaguar defense pitching its second shutout in as many weeks with interceptions from Tanner Reed and Jack Scarborough leading the Jags to a 28-0 victory. Last week, Johnson faced off with Churchill in a key district game. The Jags got off to a hot start early in the game with two touchdowns from Alex Rodriguez.
Jabari Aiken blew open the game, taking this punt return to the house before halftime to put Johnson up 28 to seven. The defense came to play once again, holding the Chargers to 14 points in a 35 to 14 victory to put the Jags at three and zero in district play and looking for more. Well, I think we're making progress. Obviously, uh, with tonight's results, anytime you can beat a, a good football team like Churchill to go 3-0 and in district, you're, you're making progress. But, but we still have better football ahead of us. The Jags look to keep winning this week against Lee to stay atop the district standings before taking on Reagan. For Jag football, this has been Reed Romine reporting. District play for volleyball is wrapping up, and the Jags are looking to lock up a playoff spot. Johnson squared off with Churchill in a match that could be a factor in playoff seeding. Churchill came out strong early and took control of the match. The Jags fought till the end but came up short losing three sets to none. With one game left in district play, Coach Fight explains the effect a long season has on a team and how they have overcome it. You know, one of the things that's hard for us is we start so early in the year that at this point we're just, it's a drain. So I'm really looking for us to continue to work hard uh, each day out, we really work hard on uh, the things that we can control and, and be successful with it. So it's uh, that continuous process and, and just staying focused on it. The volleyball takes on Madison on senior night on Tuesday before entering the playoffs. With some big games coming up this week, make sure to go out and support your JAG athletes. That's all from JAG Sports. This has been Jade Martinez and Reed Roman reporting. Social Studies teacher Nisha Moment has a sweet solution if you're looking for a new treat in San Antonio. When Nisha Moment is in front of her history class, you can find her creating sweet treats that are almost too pretty to eat. I love to bake, and so for many, many years I would bake birthday cakes, wedding cakes, and I got to a point where I wanted to do something different. Nisha Moment's bakery focuses on different types of macaroons and other kinds of sweets. So we have 22 different flavors. Uh, two of them have a uh, two of them have a jam in the middle. That's strawberry and raspberry. My favorite has to be peanut butter and jelly. The bakery sells their macaroons in boxes of multiple kinds or individually. Uh, we sell them in boxes as well as individuals. You can buy one for two seventy five. If you get two more, the two fifty a piece, or you can buy one of our boxes. Our box of six is fifteen dollars, and our box of twelve is twenty nine. Whoops Bakery is open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 9 and 12 to 6 on Sundays. So we're located at Ingram Park Mall on the second floor near the food court. From JAG TV, this is Tanner and Jackson. Coach Jay Keller let us check out his house this week. Julia and Gabby show you his crib. Hey guys, I'm Coach Keller. This is my crib. Alright, I guess we'll start with uh, my office here. Uh, this is where I keep a lot of my basketball stuff, obviously computer, a lot of pictures of Zach uh, and growing up throughout the, for their his life. So it's just kind of a nice place to get away and do, do some work, grade some papers. <laughs> this here's our dining room. We, uh, I'll be totally honest, we hardly ever, ever, ever eat in here. We unless it's Thanksgiving or Christmas. We have a lot of family over other than that. This lights off and we pretty much don't even come in here. This is our pretty much our family room. I'd, I'd say this is where we spend 95% of our time uh, right here. Um, we eat here every night, obviously watch TV. I'm watching football tonight. And it's kind of a nice, nice place to relax. So we, I like it a lot in here. See, this is the kitchen. Uh, do all the cooking in here. I don't cook a whole lot. My wife does all the cooking most of the time, so uh, just pretty normal kitchen. Another table we don't sit at right over here, so <laughs> got several of those. So pretty basic, but I like it because it's nice and open. And we, can, we can enjoy it. So this is our outdoor area. We uh, we just recently did all this. Um, obviously, couch, chairs, uh, added a barbecue pit and a and a little bar area over there sit out here sometimes watch TV and uh, it's just nice I mean it's good you can obviously see the pool over here uh, you know swim when it's weather's right we love to jump in and hang out so.
That's a wrap. That's my house. From JAG TV, this has been Julia and Gabby. Now here's something fun from the crew. Ah! I want some soup! I like some grass. <laughs> Did I feed my fish? I like that. Okay, when or why would work? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You gonna cook a trout? Mmm. No, oh, you'll stick out. I still have a panini left over. Oh wait, did I leave that in the oven? Or the microwave? Yeah, I'll take pork. Pose. Pose. Flex. Yeah. Did I turn in my homework? Or did I turn in my panini? Is it possible to turn in the panini? Well, that's it for this week, Jags. Make sure to represent your Jaguar pride wherever you go. For Jag TV, I'm Garrett Scott. And I'm Emmanuel Tony. See you next time, Jags. Welcome to Idea Industries. As we go through the tour of our labs, please remember, stick close to your guide, and disregard any glitches that may ruin your life. As